that we both do have in common is this question about music mm -hmm. the project that I've been doing, the devotional yeah, series. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, um, Bobby and I, we, well, we kind of work together in mm. the sense of... With, with um, the devotional choir. With yeah. the devotional choir mm. at the National Portrait Gallery. And for me, you know, working, working um, as I've been working on that project, the thing that has become really clear is how something like music becomes this prompt for collective memory yeah, building agree. yeah absolutely um, as well as as um, as for people inserting their own personal story within a within a bigger story mm. that's a very sort of uh, interesting place to kind of open up dialogue with people because that's where what I found is I, I had conversations through all these different pieces, through Barbie's karaoke, working with the elders group um, to explore their musical memories. They, um, you know, through music have opened up a whole bunch of other stories around, you know, be, being in Britain, working in Britain, um, coming here, uh, even sort of really nice, nice things like first time they saw snow. The devotional project uh, started in 1999, so it's been going for quite a while now. Um, and um, I was invited by FACT, which is the Foundation for Art and Creative Technology in Liverpool, to work with Liverpool Black Sisters. What actually happened on the very first session uh, with the women was that um, I asked them, you know, could, you know, could anyone name a black British female singer? And it took us 10 minutes before we could remember anybody. And so this really was the kind of, I suppose, m moment when um, uh, we did finally, you know, the first person we, we finally thought of was Shirley Bassey, mm. which was great. Um, but I think the, the women felt quite um, embarrassed, actually, by the end of the session, mm. that, we, that we were really struggling to remember anyone. Mm. Um, and they then went off and, you know, and this, was, this wasn't really the plan of the project, but they then went and asked friends and colleagues and family members, mm -hmm. can you remember anybody? And names then started to trickle back. People just kept still sending me things, mm -hmm. um, sending me names, and I would then go and do bits of research with each name. Um, and it was only at that point when things really started to, you know, like five years after the project and people were still sending me stuff. Um, that I kind of realised that there was this thing about kind of um, collective amnesia, mm -hmm. but also memory building in some way. Mm -hmm. That somehow that that people could put themselves in the work in a way that that just touched other parts of them that wasn't about necessarily about the visual. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I was kind of interested with with the project here in terms of you know the fact that you you're you know that it, it's, its form is the form of an archive. Mm -hmm. I don't think many people understand it's their role in, in creating the story, the stories that archives are telling, basically. They don't realise that. And, and um, so I thought that I, I might make that a little bit more explicit somehow by creating something that was archival, but also was, was open and, and, and people could see how they fit into it. There was recently a symposium a few weeks ago in um, Sheffield of uh, the Black Art Group, um, who were a group from the 1980s, a very young group of artists who, I suppose, set the scene for a whole generation, mm -hmm. myself and yourself, mm -hmm. kind of included, to see themselves as art you know, practitioners mm -hmm. working with big institutions. Mike Tooby, who, who, gave a, who gave a paper at the symposium, was talking about a show that he'd organised in 1984-1985 and getting some of the um, uh, audience feedback 
and a particular woman who'd gone, come to see the exhibition. And she, she was struck by what she thought by the work, or within the work, were these artists who were trying to change the world. Mm. And this idea that, that art practice, whether it's in the process or in the object, in whatever form is actually committed to changing the world mm. in some way. Uh, and that this was, for her, she didn't know that that's what art could do. To changing the world. Mm. That's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. huge. Um, I, I say that because, you know, that um, to be an artist doesn't necessarily mean that. No. You know, it doesn't. But, you know, from what you've been saying, and, you know, it's something that I sign up to as well. It's a whole host of people, I think. But it's not one that's kind of put at the forefront of what art practice can be about. Mm. Is this idea that you bring other people with you, you know, you keep that mm. door open, you know, that you, you know, the, the idea of, of, of fostering and, and harbouring and nurturing stories that don't necessarily get into the official mm. sites like the big museums, mm. the official archives, that people might feel really like these things aren't, this, this place isn't meant for me somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but as an artist, you say, yeah, come on, come yeah. on, let's, you know, let's, we, we can go let's here. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, we can go here. I see that the politics of, of history is being, of being opened up by this, this conversation. Uh, the idea of archiving and who owns history or whose histories belong in those spaces. I have been thinking a lot about politics and pleasure and, um, and not politics necessarily as burden. This, people come in here and smile, people can come into this space um, and put on a tape and they can put on a, a record or they can play. And it does, it, it does have a kind of element of, of, of pleasure, but they also take time out. Um, some people get lost in time, they, they don't expect to stay here for two hours playing or whatever hundred records that we've got here, um, choosing things, hearing things that they've never heard before or, or, or reigniting memories that they had before. Um, and that time is quite, I think, is quite important. It's a quite a important political thing is that we don't generally have time and um, so that I, I see in, I see politics in all, in all these little things that I think are really quite important you know time like you said pleasure you know um, communication <laughs> um, uh, I suppose companionship um, engagement participation what I suppose I find most difficult is, is, is defining, you know, what is work and what is my practice. Because I know that they blur and I know that they speak to each other. So before I was doing, I suppose till about four years ago, I was doing a lot of art, uh, uh, gallery education work, working on projects with, you know, organisations like Creative Partnerships and, and, and um, doing bits of uh, writing and um, curating and teaching. Um, and now I'm doing, um, I'm associate curator 198, contemporary arts and learning. So um, I fundraise for my post with, with um, the director. And then I've done a little bit of teaching here and there as well. Um, where I would like to go, I'm thinking of more and more about, um, about research and leadership and ways in which to work with because I'm interested in, in, in institutions and artists and how they work together. And as I was saying before, I'm very interested in, in also, you know, what, what, is, what are these communities and what, are, what is participation? Well, I've always had to juggle, mm. um, mainly through, um, it, at one point it was an, an, a mixture of doing kind of workshops through um, galleries and uh, bits of teaching, and I've been kind of visiting lecture, doing studio practice teaching for nearly for nearly thirty years mm -hmm. now. Um, and over the over the more recent years, um, I I'm always applying for grants 
fellowships. It's always a juggle between um, bits of money in different pockets, mm. basically, um, um, and always very short term. So it's very episodic yeah, yeah, where the yeah. money comes in. You no, know, freelance, basically. Mm. Um, I've had. In the past, I've had relationships with commercial galleries, but they've always been quite short-lived. Mm. The thing that that I would say about selling work through a commercial gallery, that's, that's how my work, often how my work has been in public collections. Mm. The, last, the last few years, of course, because of the cuts and change in, in terms of the Arts Council, what it prioritises, it's become much more difficult to apply for things. Mm. You know, and I really worry about the emerging generation in yeah. terms of where they will find their sources of, um, of money if mm. they're not directly plugged into a kind of gallery selling kind of system, mm. um, where they will start to, you know, how, will, how they will juggle what, what is available for them. Mm. And maybe it is through the social media, maybe it is through you know, crowdfunding or those mm. aspects of, um, of, of raising money to make the work um, that people have to look more and more and be more and more inventive with. But I, I'm just, you know, the fact that it should be, you know, that we're just being funneled towards being entrepreneurs, I just kind of think, well, I don't know, I, I just feel that we should have my, many more opportunities than that. Um, and we have to maybe, we have to fight for more yeah. opportunities. And I suppose it goes back to responsibility. I mean, as artists who have been here for a while, um, do we also have a responsibility to enable and to help young people to, you know, continue to develop a, a representative artistic system in, in this country? Thank you.